So hello guys, welcome back. So yeah, in today's video, we are going to cover this problem first. So we have a round vertical cylinder of radius of radius r and it is attached to a horizontal plane. An inextensible thread of length L directed tangent to the surface of the cylinder is connected to the side surface of the cylinder at the bottom. A small washer is attached to the other end of the thread. The washer is given a horizontal velocity of V0 and it's directed perpendicular to the thread. Now, uh, the washer begins to slide along the plane. Mark twice the time the washer continues to move if there is friction between the washer and the plane. Okay, and the mu value is given to be 0.2. Okay, so um, directly we can write down the tangential acceleration. This is just going to be negative mu g, right? Because, uh, because kinetic friction would be directed opposite to the velocity vector at all times and its magnitude will be mu mg. So the tangential acceleration would just be negative mu g. Okay, and this is like minus two meters per second squared. So if the tangential acceleration is uh, minus two meters per second squared, we can use um, v equal to u plus at. And if when the washer comes to rest, speed would be zero. This would be equal to initial speed v naught minus the tangential velocity into the time. So the time when the speed becomes zero is going to be v naught by at, which is five by two or 2.5 seconds, okay? So if we assume the washer doesn't collide with the cylinder and it's just moving along the plane, then it would come to rest in 2.5 seconds, okay? We also have to check that if the washer collides with the cylinder in this time of 2.5 seconds or not, okay? So from the top view, if this is the cylinder, and let's just say the reference position of the thread was uh, along the minus j direction, okay? And uh, the thread's length was L and initial velocity was V0. Now the, now the red thread will start getting wound around the cylinder and uh, now we can, now for a general position theta, the situation will look something like this. The rest of the thread would be tangent to that particular point. Let's call this point as point P. Okay, so now of course as the string is inextensible, uh, at this moment of time, the velocity vector will be perpendicular to the string length's direction uh, or we can also say that this point P is the instantaneous center uh, of the washer's circular motion, okay? And this instantaneous center keeps changing. So uh, at this particular instant, the washer's velocity will be perpendicular to this red thread, something like this, okay? So this is how the motion looks like. So if this radius is r, then this length um, op, which is the arc of a circle is just r theta. So the effective length of the moving part of the thread is just l minus r theta. So the length uh, as a function of theta is just l minus r theta. And uh, another thing to notice is that the angle that the moving part of the string makes with the horizontal is also theta, which means uh, d theta by dt can be written as v divided by l minus r theta, right? Because the rate of change of this angle theta uh, is just going to be the perpendicular velocity divided by the radius of the circular motion. So v divided by l minus r theta will give d theta by dt. So, so now the thing is uh, we want to figure out when does l become zero. For that, if we set l theta as zero, we get theta root theta equals L divided by R. And this turns out to be three by two or 1.5 radian. So after rotating 1.5 radian, the length of the thread becomes zero. Or basically we can say that the washer is close to, the washer is about to collide with the cylinder. Okay, so let's find, we want the time at which this happens. So for that we need to use some calculus here. So what we'll do is we'll um, separate the variables on both sides of these equations. So we get L minus R theta times D theta equals V DT. Okay, so now here the speed, uh, V is actually the speed, right? And this is a function of time mm, because there is tangential acceleration. So this would be V naught minus uh, the tangential acceleration times time DT, okay? So yeah, now it's a simple integral. So at time T equal to zero, the angle rotated is zero because that's when we took our reference, right? So, and we need the time at which the angle rotated is L by R or 1.5 radian. So now if we integrate it, um, we get L times 1.5 minus R theta squared by two or R 1.5 squared by two uh, equals V naught into T minus the tangential acceleration times T squared by two. So now let's substitute all the values in. So 4.5 minus R is two, 1.5 squared would be 2.25. This is equal to V naught, which is 5T minus the tangential acceleration was two. So this is just T squared. So we get T squared minus 5T plus 2.25. 
equal to 0. Okay, so 2.25 is the product of 1.5 times 1.5. This we can write as point. Um, this we can write as 0 0.5 times 3. And then we have a 4.5. Okay, so basically this quadratic roots is uh, t minus 0.5 multiplied with t minus 4.5. Now from these two we'll of course choose the smaller value of t equal to 0.5 seconds and uh, so basically in 0.5 seconds what will happen is the string of length l will be completely wound around the cylinder. It will be completely wound around the cylinder and the particle is now about to collide and this particular particle will be about to collide. Okay. Now the thing is we know that friction would have only stopped this particle after 2.5 seconds. So this 0.5 comes before that. So this particle will have some normal velocity. So the thing is unless and until we know what is the nature of this collision, uh, we can't comment on what is this rebound velocity. Okay. So of course uh, the a normal impulse will act and the ball will rebound with some velocity. Let's call it Vn dash. We can't figure out what this value Vn dash is unless the nature of collision is mentioned. Uh, in the question, they just assumed it is an inelastic collision, meaning V n dash would become zero and the particles just stops there. But uh, this is not mentioned, so we can't comment on this. But yeah, in the answer key, they just assume this, which means the answer for delta t is going to be 0 0.5 seconds or 2 delta t is 1. Okay, so this was the answer key. So yeah, that's the discussion for this problem. Now, coming to this problem, we have a particle that is moving along the x-axis with a speed u less than 4. At t0, at t equal to 0, a variable force starts, act on the par starts acting on the particle so that its acceleration along x and y change periodically with time as shown in the graphs. The magnitude of acceleration along either axis become half after a gap of time tau. Okay, so from 0 to tau, there's no AX acceleration and uh, AY acceleration is A. And uh, as you can observe, there's no acceleration for tau seconds and after, ta and after that tau, it becomes one half. Okay, and this keeps happening again and again or periodically. Now the question, uh, now in the question it said in subsequent motion, the maximum angle between the particle's velocity vector and its initial velocity is 53 degrees. Um, so initial velocity is along the x direction. So with the x di so with the x axis, the velocity vector's angle theta achieves a maximum value of 53 degrees in the subsequent motion. Now this information is given a subscript tau is two. So looking at the um, so observing the units, this must be a times tau, and this would be two meters per second, right? So this has to be an acceleration multiplied with a time. Um, so now the question is, we have to find 10 times the maximum speed achieved by the particle okay so basically we have to find max speed that the particle achieves so yeah, first let's try to use this particular fact um, which is like the max angle being 53 degrees so let's okay so in this particular question we uh, we will use vectors so the initial vector as it's given it's going to be u along the i cap direction and u is given to be smaller than 4 in magnitude okay so in the first tau seconds as you can see, uh, AX has no change and AY, after tau seconds, it's the change in velocity is A into tau, which is 2 meter per second. Okay, so after the first tau seconds, the velocity vector will be UI cap plus 2J cap, right? And in the next tau seconds, uh, the Y doesn't change, but the X changes by A tau, uh, which means the new, which means we'll just add a 2 in the X direction. So the new velocity vector will be u plus 2i cap and uh, plus 2j cap. So and uh, now the thing is in the next tau, once again, um, the acceleration halves and the pattern continues. Okay. So in the first tau, after tau seconds, we'll add a 2 meter per second like this. So just to get a rough idea of um, this particular angle, let's call this as theta 1. Tan theta 1 is 2 divided by u. And u is smaller than 4. So in the so let's just say if it was equal to 4, um, thing is this would be tan inverse of half, okay? So which means the angle theta 1 is greater than tan inverse of half, whatever that is, okay? That is something to keep in mind so that we get an idea of the angles. Now the next velocity vector addition is 2 along the x direction. Now it's very intuitive and we can easily comment that it doesn't matter what time you choose after tau seconds, the angle just keeps reducing. So if you choose this particular time, uh, which is a time between tau and two tau seconds, this is going to be your final velocity vector, okay? But it's very obvious that the angle has reduced. So 
okay so as long as you move towards the horizontal the angle reduces and once you start moving along the vertical the angle starts increasing so that's the intuitive understanding now um, so basically f from 0 to tau theta increases and from tau to 2 tau theta decreases and from 2 tau to 3 tau it increases once again so the maximum angle will be at one of these steps right so in the next tau it will be one vector vertically so this is going to be another point of consideration now the question is in which of these vertical tips arrow tips is the angle maximum so that's the final question so let's just consider uh, the vertical vector of magnitude one so if um, this is the case now the thing is what is this particular angle so if this is let's say a delta v vector what is this what is this exact angle so this theta is actually tan inverse of half if you observe but here we initially commented that theta 1 is greater than tan inverse half. So the situation is actually something like this. This is the initial vector where this is u and this is going to be, so this is going to be that 2 vector and this is going to be the u vector and this is theta 1. So this uh, vector is actually steeper than the delta v vector. So the delta v vector will look something like this. Okay, so this is going to be the next 2 and this is going to be the 1. Okay, now from this diagram, it's very obvious that theta 1, okay, now if you add the original uh, v vector after tau to delta v, it's very obvious that you get a vector which is which has a reduced angle. So now the thing is the next, uh, after one more tau seconds, we'll add a 1 along the horizontal and a 0.5 along the vertical, which is exactly parallel to this delta v. Okay, so, okay. Which means once again we'll get an ang uh, once again we'll get a vector which has smaller angle. So the thing is with vectors we can very easily see that theta one is the maximum angle, okay? Because uh, now because whatever vector we add to to this velocity vector, the resultant velocity vector will have a smaller angle, okay? And uh, we get the idea using this fun uh, this vertical relation theta one greater than tan inverse of half. So we figure out this angle is bigger than this angle. So this vector will be something like this and this vector will be making a smaller angle or smaller slope. So if you add these two vectors, you get a vector which has effectively a smaller angle than theta one. Okay, and uh, you can keep continuing this argument. So in the next 0.1 change and 0.5 change, also you get a delta V, which is parallel to this delta V. So once again, you get a, you get a function with an even smaller angle. Okay. So clearly theta one is the maximum. Okay, and now once that is proved, uh, theta one is just 53 degrees because it was provided in the problem. So which means tan theta one, which is two divided by u, is uh, tan 53, which is four by three, or we can say u is six by four or 1.5 meters per second. Now the maximum speed is very obvious. Of course, speed is nothing but under root of vx squared plus vy squared, right? Now as, so the bigger the Vx and the bigger the Vy, of course, the bigger the speed. So basically that will be an infinite sum, right? Uh, I mean an infinite GP sum. So basically Vx would be uh, 1.5 plus 2 plus 1 plus and so on and the infinite GP uh, of the series. So this is going to be the Vx when uh, after a very, very long time. So this is going to be 1.5 plus uh, some of this infinite GP is A divided by one minus common ratio. So this is just four. So this is going to be 5.5 uh, and VY is just going to be, well, that is exactly this GP itself. So VY is four. So the maximum speed is under root of 5.5 squared plus four squared under root. Okay, so this turns out to be approximately 6.8 uh, meters per second. And I guess they wanted uh, 10 times the maximum speed 10 times this value is going to be 68. Okay, so, okay, yeah, so that was a solution to this problem. So we'll see the other problems soon as well. So I'll bring the other problems soon as well. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Take care. Goodbye.